What's up YouTube? Welcome back to this installment of how to use special tools. Today we're going to be doing a remote starter switch, so stay tuned. Alright, so I had to get the Diag bag out. And this is our tool right here. It's a remote start switch. I'm going to show you guys how to use one and what it's for. So let's bring it over here to the car. Alright, so the test dummy today is going to be my van. And in order to do this test, you want to make sure that your battery is fully charged or as close to it as possible. Because if you have a dead battery, then you're going to get false results when you're trying to test a starter. So let's go down underneath the vehicle here. And then we'll get this light turned on. And you can see the starter. Now, pretty much every starter is going to have... Um, three connections here or three spots on the solenoid I'll zoom in there for you the one on the left right by my well that's gonna focus and screw it up the one on the bottom and on the left the bolt or the nut right underneath the yellow wire is basically the receiving end of the 12 volts on the top is where there's 12 volts all the time and from there that wire on the top more rusty looking nut that wire right here goes to the battery and then the yellow wire is the signal wire that is where the computer sends the signal to the starter to go ahead and allow it to start so when that solenoid is signaled by the computer the 12 volts goes from the rusty bolt through the solenoid um, and it's received over here because the um, signal wire is getting power. So what the remote start switch does is it completely bypasses the computer and the signal and it basically, as long as you know that your starter ground is good, and you know that your battery is good, then this is going to directly test to see if the starter works. It's going to send direct battery power to the starter. So I'll get it hooked up, and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so now we got it hooked up, and we've got one lead connected to the only part of the solenoid that doesn't have a connector on it the signal wires here the power wire is there the other part is just the um there's like a little braided wire going from the motor to the solenoid so what we're going to do is basically connect it to both nuts also you could this is the one you always want to connect it to but if it's more convenient you can actually connect this one directly to the battery as well and that would do the exact same thing so if you have a working starter you'll get this Oh, my connections may not be good. Interesting. Well, that's just proof right there. You always got to make sure your connections are good. Went ahead and adjusted them a little bit, made sure that they were on there a little bit better. And now when I squeeze the trigger, you can kind of hear the starter moving. And um, a lot of times it will actually turn over the engine as well. Not sure why exactly this one is not uh, doing the full process of the starter. It's just spinning the motor, but it's not actually kicking the gear. However, I know this starter works because, as I mentioned earlier, it is on my personal van. So, not sure um, why the gear is not actually being pressed. However, the um, purpose of this is to show you guys how to hook this tool up 
and how to use it and why you would want to use it and generally you're going to hook it up in this area and it's going to prove whether the starter motor itself does or does not work because you are bypassing the computer and the signal wire and you are sending direct battery power to the starter it kind of is uh, a way to eliminate some other possible factors that could be uh, causing the starter not to work if the starter does work when you use this tool but it doesn't work with the key then you know that the starter itself is not going to fix the problem and that's kind of the point of this video as i can see that the starter is working and obviously i know it's working because it's my vehicle but um i am interested to know why the uh why the gear didn't actually kick out though because it does normally do that um it may be and i'm i could be totally wrong on here but it may be that the motor itself doesn't pull a lot of current or as much but it takes a lot of current to push that gear out and so i'm wondering if maybe these wires just aren't a thick enough gauge and that's what the power was actually going through. That's my best guess. Could be totally wrong on that. But that's a, a different topic for a different video. The point is, I wanted to show you guys how to use this tool. I've had pretty good uh, luck with it myself. I do want to go ahead and mention that this is not the only test that you would want to do. And it's not the only tool that you're going to use to diagnose a bad starter. This is just one of the methods that you can use to kind of uh, point yourself in the right direction. You definitely want to check your ground on the starter. You definitely want to check the positive battery cable, the battery itself, the signal wire circuit integrity. You want to see if you're actually getting a signal. You may even need to check voltage drops. However, the point of this series is to kind of show you guys some cool tools that you can use to either make your diagnostic process easier or to make it faster. And a lot of these tools may not always be for diagnostics, but they may just be tools to help speed you up. But I wanted to go ahead and post this video today because I know I've been slacking on this particular series. I plan to do at least 10 of these. To be honest with you, I'm running out of ideas on them, but I am going to keep it up till we get at least 10. And um, I also am somewhat limited uh, based on the tools I actually have. As I acquire new tools, if they're pretty cool and unique and not something that everybody knows what they do, like a screwdriver or something, then I'll definitely happily post a video about those moving forward. However, that's going to be the end of the video for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.